Hello, my name is Mars. Today we will be learning about Kepler's three laws, Newton's four laws, and how some of them relate to one another. Let's start off with Newton's four laws. Newton's first law, also known as the law of inertia, is an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon an unbalanced force. For example, bowling pins on a bowling alley will stay at rest. The gravity pulling the bowling pins down counters the bowling alley's force pushing the bowling pins up at the same spot. Because the amount of force is equal to one another, it is called a balanced force. But when an external force with no other force to counter it acts upon the objects, in this case a bowling ball, it is called an unbalanced force. When the bowling ball hits the bowling pins, the external unbalanced force collides with the balance force, changing its state of motion. Next, we have Newton's second law. Acceleration is decided on the amount of mass and the amount of force. This law's formula is known as F equals MA. F stands for force, M stands for mass, and A stands for acceleration. This law basically means that the more mass an object has, the more force is needed to accelerate it. This is why it is easier to kick a soccer ball across a field than it is to kick a truck across the field. Next, we have Newton's third law. If there is an action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. An example of this is a rocket's liftoff. The rocket's engines push the ground with burning gases, and the ground reacts by pushing the rocket up and away. Finally, we reach Newton's fourth law, also known as the law of universal gravitation. All objects have gravity. The amount of mass and distance equals the strength of the gravitational pull. An example of this is a comet orbiting a planet. The further away the comet is, the comet is less affected by the planet's gravity, still allowing it to orbit the planet. But the closer the comet is to the planet, the more the comet is affected by the planet's gravity, causing the comet to orbit closer to the planet and in some cases, crash into the planet. Now we go on to Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Kepler's first law. All planets travel in an ellipse with the parent star in the center of the ellipse. Next off is Kepler's second law. The closer a planet is to the sun, the faster the same planet will travel. Finally, Kepler's third law. The further away a planet is to the sun, the longer the period of revolution will be for the planet. Now that we have gone over these laws, allow me to tell you how some of these laws relate to one another. Kepler's first law and Newton's first law relate to one another because the planets want to go in a straight motion that stays consistent away from the sun. But they can't. Because the sun's gravity is acting as a greater unbalanced force causing the planet to move in an elliptical orbit. Finally, Newton's fourth law relates to Kepler's third law because Newton's fourth law explains that mass plus distance equals the strength of gravitational pull. So, if the planet is further away from the sun in its elliptical orbit, the amount of gravitational pull will be less. This was Mars with your three Newton laws of motion, Newton's fourth law of gravity, Kepler's laws of planetary motion, and how some of them relate.